Having a physical disability and poor mental health is a battle many are fighting and winning. This is Hashtag I Got This. On this episode of Hashtag I Got This, when tragedy turns to triumph, find out how an adaptive water sport is carving out a new future for a community of athletes. April 6, 2018, uh, my hockey team, the Humble Broncos, we were on our way to a playoff game and our bus collided with a semi. We begin tonight with a breaking news story we're following out of Saskatchewan. RCMP have confirmed a deadly crash involving a bus carrying a junior hockey team. This happened near Tisdale, which is about 200 kilometers northeast of Saskatoon. It was a catastrophic crash that sent waves of grief across the country. A bus full of teenaged hockey players and coaches was ripped in half with their bodies thrown amongst the wreckage. 15 died. 14 were injured, including the team's goalie, Jacob Wasserman. I don't have any memory of the accident or that whole day beforehand. It all was just gone. I don't, very thankful. I don't remember anything at all from what I've heard. Uh, it's pretty horrific. The accident rocked the tight knit community. Condolences poured out for those impacted, as seen by this makeshift roadside shrine at the location of the crash. This terrible event was especially life-altering for the 19-year-old hockey pro. My first memory was when they pulled me out of my coma five days later. I was in a medically induced coma because I couldn't breathe on my own with two collapsed lungs, and I ended up a T10 paraplegic. This footage shows the last game played by the Broncos before the crash, and Jacob's last time in the crease. I've had my life planned out since I was four years old. I wanted to be a professional hockey player. I mean, every little kid that plays hockey wants that, but it was looking like a possibility for me. Like I was ranked to get drafted and I was trying out for Team Canada. I was going to all these good things and it was like in my head, I'm going, okay, I can do this. Like I'm going to make it. And then it was all of a sudden in a blink of an eye, I woke up in a hospital and it was all, you know, you're, you got to change everything you, you knew about your life. And my surgeon came. Straight up, I said, will I ever walk again? I just didn't want any beater on the bush just telling me. He said to me, you never know what's gonna happen. That small spark of hope stayed in the back of Jacob's mind as he began rehabilitation in the hospital for life in a chair. It gave my mind something to be busy on because when your mind's not busy, that's when uh, you think too much and things get, things get bad. So not only was Jacob dealing with his newfound paralysis, he was also dealing with the emotional toll of losing half of his hockey family. I was mostly upset that I never got to say goodbye to a lot of the guys. I never got to, and I don't even remember my last moments with them. Jacob tried to reconnect with his hockey brothers once again in any way he could. Something interesting I did early on when I got home, I went to go see a medium. So I, it was like I could say goodbye or just have one more chance to talk with the guys. And when they came forward and I was able to kind of speak with them, it felt real. Like, I could feel that there was somebody there. There was a presence with me there, multiple. And it, that day was the turning point for me. He gained some closure there, but was struggling to accept his new life after he was discharged from the hospital. He was a hockey player through and through and had dedicated his life to the game. He didn't know how to define himself now. And when I was in the hospital, I didn't, didn't affect me because I was busy rehabbing. It's when I got out, that two months after I got out, I was angry, didn't know what to do because I was so, I've never had that feeling of what do I do with myself today? And that was scary, like really scary for me. Little did Jacob know his life would soon change in a way he never expected. His thirst for a team and competition would soon be quenched. His dream of being a nationally ranked athlete was not as impossible as he thought. Shailene Leibel Smith is a recreation therapist and was part of the team who worked to rehabilitate Jacob in hospital. Today, she's helping another client learn how to reintegrate back into the world, a world that can be perceived as very different from the one they knew. 
I think that people go through it, a change where they sometimes feel that they are not part of their old community anymore or, um, or that their community has changed. And because their life has changed so much, it's important for them to meet a new community. So an important thing uh, in rehab, I think, is that we try to pair patients up with new peers. And there's an organization called um, Spinal Cord Injury Saskatchewan who has a great program there. And for us, we're really lucky that we can phone them up and kind of give a description of, of who we're looking for. And they can match our clients up um, with peers who can really talk to them about what it's really like. That same program sent a potential peer to see Jacob in hospital, someone else in a chair with an incredible life-changing story of his own. At first, Jacob was less than receptive. And I wanted nothing to do with him. I heard a guy in a wheelchair was coming to see me and I did not want to see him at all. So I said, I was kind of just laying in bed, being all sorry for myself and he came and visited, was just a friend, really talked with my parents, they had lots of questions and he, yeah, he, he could just talk and talk and talk, and he was really good for me, and we ended up becoming good buddies. That visitor's name is Nolan Barnes, and today he's playing a key role in Jacob's rehabilitation journey. He introduced Jacob to a sport that's changed everything. Adaptive water skiing. It's become Jacob's new passion and a way to reestablish that strong work ethic he honed as a hockey player. His drive to succeed is quickly moving him towards the top spot in the sport. So finding that thing to finally say, oh, this is what I'm doing, like getting back into that routine, that was the thing that I think that saved me. 27-year-old Nolan knew that would be the case. Water skiing helped him in his remarkable journey following his own traumatic encounter that left him a T6 paraplegic when he was 18 years old. So May 8th, 2010, uh, I was with uh, eight of my friends. Uh, we were in a single vehicle rollover coming back from a party in Saskatoon. We were all intoxicated, um, including the driver. I fell asleep in the vehicle. Uh, next moment, I woke up. I'm laying face down in a ditch, and I can't feel the lower half of my body. I'd broken my back in three places. T5, 6, 7, uh, T6 being the part where the injuries was, was sustained. And that left me as a, they call it a complete uh, paraplegic, meaning that the cord was severely damaged to the point of little to no chance of any function being, being regained from that. Before I was hurt, it was two months prior, I was with my dad and we we're working in my shop at the farm. And it was such a random thing, but I told him, I said, man, I, I think I heard of a story of someone getting paralyzed. And I said, if I was ever paralyzed, I'd kill myself. I said, like, that's not a life I'd wish on anybody. And every day I woke up, I just was hoping that it was just gonna be a dream. And that, uh, I, you know, that would, I would learn from that mistake based on that, but uh, it was reality. And there's no going back. There's no undoing that, rewriting that, reliving that moment. It was, it was real. In my mind, I'm just thinking like, you know, like, what's my life gonna look like? I just started to see all my goals and dreams just crumble before my eyes. The seemingly endless days in the hospital turned torturous for Nolan Barnes while he tried to contend with reality. Uh, people are just living their lives business as usual, right? Even though your life's flipped upside down, the rest of the world doesn't stop moving for you. Um, so to, to see via social media, people going to parties and people having fun and doing things and you're stuck in this you know, a little room with just a little window and you can't even get out and into your chair if you wanted to, right? You're just not able to do that. Um, that was super difficult. His confidence plummeted. He began to withdraw from people and sabotage relationships he built before the accident. You know, I mean, I was kind of seeing someone when that happened and then I wanted nothing to do with her because I just felt like someone that could care for me, even though I was in a wheelchair, and when I had no respect for myself, I thought something must be wrong with this person. Why would they, why would they love someone like me? Before long, Nolan was convinced this life was unbearable. I used to hit my legs all the time. I'd punch them, hoping that there'd be a blood clot that would form. So I'm not deliberately killing myself, but that would be a way to go. So I'd sit at, at night and I would just 
punch my legs, punch my legs, punch my legs, uh, punch walls. You know, I, I would just get so mad um, at my at my situation. You know, I was just I was almost welcoming some disease or something to come take me away, kind of thing, right? At the time, Nolan believed it was impossible for his life to ever get better, but it did, and the life change to come would astound everyone. Stay tuned. We'll be back with hashtag I got this. Welcome back. This is hashtag I got this. Shock, anger, sadness, despair, all common experiences when one undergoes a life altering change as Jacob Wasserman and Nolan Barnes had. For Nolan, his perspective shifted dramatically when he began to socialize with others in wheelchairs who were doing all the things he thought were off limits. He soon realized he was only bound to the box he built around himself. So I tried a whole bunch of different wheelchair sports and one of them was kind of right off the beaten path and it was water skiing. Well, I come from a water ski family, not competitive water ski, but just a recreational water ski family. So they basically took us, got us all cabs and shipped us down to the Saskatoon Water Ski Club where I watched a guy go off a jump on this water ski. And I just thought, wow, it just looks so cool because it wasn't so stereotypical wheelchair sport. It's a warm, sunny day at the Rat Hole, a large pond and home to a water ski club located right in the city of Saskatoon. Seated in a custom slalom ski made for competitive adaptive water skiing, Nolan pushes himself off the dock and into the water. I grab a hold of the rope that's attached to the boat. Okay. Cue the driver when I'm ready. And he pulls me on top of the water. It's an amazing feeling. As the boat picks up speed, Nolan begins to carve the water effortlessly. First, it was just supposed to be for fun. Like, I just wanted to try it kind of thing. Uh, then I met Dave Wassell, the national team coach, and he's seen some potential in me and said, hey, you know, you can really go far with this. Nolan began to train daily and slowly worked his way up through the rankings. Today, he represents Canada on the national team. When I made the national team, that was a huge goal in itself because it was only two years after the crash. So I was so excited. But he still had a lot to learn. I went to my first world championships and got last place and I just seen the work that had to be done. Um, and you seen these athletes that are just super high caliber athletes, and I'm like, how am I ever gonna compete with these guys? He kept working at it. Over time, he improved a lot. This video shows Nolan breaking a world record in men's seated slalom at the World Championships in Norway. He placed third overall. You can hear his parents, Sharon and Gord Barnes, cheering from the stands. Not only did, I, did they come and support me, but they see me up on the podium, right, representing Canada, uh, fulfilling my dreams, um, you know, the, and for them it was just an absolutely, I think for everybody, but for them especially, it was an absolutely emotional experience to see me, uh, you know, go out and stroke another goal off the list kind of thing. And, and uh, you know, I'm so lucky to have uh, people like them in my life. Sharon Barnes says early on, she had no idea what her son could be capable of. When he was in rehab, there's a wall on rehab that people were kayaking, people were doing great things. And I just remember looking at this wall and going, oh, if only he could do a fraction of that. If only he could do that. That's all, you know, that's all I'm praying for that, that he can do. And, uh, he far surpassed that. Sharon says it all comes down to allowing your child to become independent and navigate the world around them on their own, no matter how difficult that may be for a parent. I think the biggest piece of advice is to realize that it's their journey. And that's so hard. As a mom, you want to come in and fix. You can't fix it. You can only just be there for them, praise them in the things that they are doing well, 
Like a tree does not go strong if all it gets is sunshine and rain. It needs the wind to make it strong. And I think that's a good, a good way of saying it for Nolan. These things that he had to face made him stronger, made him better, made him more determined. He has come so far but he's done it on his own. If we would have been there helping him, he wouldn't have owned it himself, right? He wouldn't have had ownership of who he's become today. He has become that on his own, and so as parents. Our journey is a different journey, and we have to recognize that, of acceptance of where he is today, good and bad, and he moves forward at his pace. We're just so very fortunate that um, he moved forward in the way he did. And he wouldn't be helping so many others. All the success is what led him to the hospital bedside of Jacob Wasserman and others. And I do a ton of getting new people involved in that sport. If I see a guy in a wheelchair or a blind person or a person missing an arm or a leg, I go and talk to him about water skiing and try and give other people that opportunity that I had because it's given me so much in life and it's taught me more on and off the water. Well, growing up and being a man and, and uh, you know, overcoming some, some hardships in life and, and some obstacles. And so if I can give someone else that opportunity to do something like that, knowing that that could potentially change their life, then uh, you know, I'll stop at nothing to get you out on the water and, and put that smile on your face and, and see where it goes. Back at the Water Ski Club at the Rat Hole, there's no shortage of smiles. Here, people with varying disabilities hang out together, train together, and sometimes tease each other. Are you single? 33-year-old <laughs> Ryan Reel is usually on the delivering end of that. He's both blind and deaf and has been a competitive adaptive water skier for 14 years. What he's been able to achieve on the water is nothing short of remarkable. Just feel free. You know, every time I go out on the ski site, it's like I have no disability. It's, I go out there and I ski, and uh, I'm just like everybody else that skis out on the water. The team's coach, Dave Wassell, who has learned to interpret for Ryan by writing letters in his hand, says there is just something about the sport that brings the best out in people who feel they've hit a physical and emotional wall. This sport has all of the things that athletes look for. We have sensation in the speed and the water and the, and the pull and the pressure of the water and the balance and all those things. If you get here after work at the Saskatoon Water Sea Club in the evening, you're going to see wheelchairs everywhere. You're going to see people in canes all over the place sitting on the deck. They're uh, visiting while other people are skiing and taking their turn. And, and we've got a lot of people who, who came that were, um, were dealing with some issues, possibly depressed. Uh, unmotivated, all of those things from, that come with uh, having acquiring a disability or having a, a life of disability and, uh, and coming out the other end. The, the, these people are strong and as healthy as, as anybody. Stay tuned. We'll be back with Hashtag I Got This. And we're back with hashtag I got this. Jacob Wasserman splits his days between the ski club and the rat hole and the gym where he's building his upper body strength so he can continue to improve on the water. Now a competitive member of the Saskatchewan and Canadian adaptive water ski team, he says he's no longer defined by his identity as a hockey player or by the tragedy he experienced. Going through our accident, it was like going through hell and back. I mean, everybody scarred through it. it at times, my, I thought life was awful. It sucked for a while, but came through it, helping my family, my friends. Got a beautiful girlfriend now. She's like my rock, supports me whenever I start feeling low. Life's honestly amazing right now. I'm water skiing every day that I can on the national team. I couldn't be happier right now. At times I was real sad that hockey was over, but at this point, it's, that's the past, and I, I enjoy the memories, I cherish them, but I'm looking forward to the future. 
just get into the community of sports is what you want to do and put yourself out there. Try it. Don't be scared because everybody, everybody wants you there. And I, I understand that you're going to have the tough times. Like I had lots of days where it's like, oh, I don't want to get out of bed. I don't want to do this. Like that depression sets in where I know if I go, I'll have a lot of fun, but I really don't want to go. But you just got to sometimes you just got to beat that and just bite, bite your tongue and go for it. Shailene, a recreation therapist, agrees wholeheartedly. I think it's really important to just get out there and be active um, in any way, shape or form. Not everybody is going to come out and be an athlete um, and be um, specifically interested in a sport to the extent that they are capable of becoming uh, a national you know, athlete. But the joy that comes from just being active with a group of people um, and even if it's you don't really want to socialize with a whole lot of people there's lots that people can do um, just on their own that will bring joy to their lives and uh, and some purpose and give them that reason for getting up in the morning the former Humboldt Broncos goalie is someone with a wide-ranging mix of talents who knows he can excel in any number of sports still He's got his eye on the prize when it comes to this one. Yeah, with water skiing, my goal is one day to be the world champion. I know it might be might be a little ways away, a couple years, but that's that's the goal. I want to be sitting on top of the podium with a gold medal. When he's not in a wetsuit, Nolan works as a division manager for a financial company and travels the country as a motivational speaker. He's very aware that his life could have taken a much different path had he succumbed to his mental despair. However, he says he's glad to have gone through it, all of it. What I often tell people that are struggling, uh, you know, with any kind of mental health issue, I said it's okay to feel down and sad because if you haven't really truly felt broken, you can't experience what it's like to be at that total top level where you're extremely happy and, and, uh, and feeling that joy because uh, you have no perspective, right? If life was just one level playing field, you wouldn't be able to be happy or sad because you wouldn't know the difference. The therapist says, if you can't seem to pull yourself out of your depressed state long enough to try something new, you should see a doctor. But if you can, there's a whole world of opportunity waiting for you. Humans are made to wear many hats and excel in many things. And if you open yourself up to the possibilities and are willing to get your feet a bit wet, you're going to be okay. Say it with me. Hashtag, I got this. Video production, Tara Yolan Productions. Integrated described video specialist, M. Williams. Regional content specialist, Jim Crisco. Coordinating producer, Jennifer Johnson. Director of production, Kara Nye. Director of programming, Brian Perdue. VP Programming and Production, John Melville. President and CEO, David Arrington. Copyright 2020, AMI Accessible Media, Inc.